Good morning friends and colleagues. Thank you for tuning in today as we cover a very special webinar session. Uh, this is of course one from the National Road Safety Partnership Program. Uh, as I said, this webinar is proudly delivered by the NRSPP together with ARB and the Industry Road Safety Alliance of Southwest Western Australia. My name is Angela Ratz and I am the online training coordinator here at ARB Group and I'll be providing technical support uh, for today's session, though hopefully we won't need any of that. My esteemed colleague and manager of the NRSPP, Jerome Carslick, joins me in the studio today to moderate this webinar and I'll hand over to Jerome shortly to give us a little more insight into the NRSPP for those of you um, unfamiliar. Now in terms of housekeeping, and I'll try and keep it nice and brief, but the recording of today's session uh, together with the PowerPoint will be provided for all our listeners today via email. For our live listeners, please don't hesitate to get involved by asking questions. And for those listening to the podcast, the presenter details will be available on the next slide should you wish to contact him at any stage. Before I hand over to our presenter, Simon Dent, uh, to tell us about himself and uh, his presentation today, I'll welcome Jerome Carslick to the microphone. Welcome, Jerome. Why don't you give us a little bit of a background uh, into the NRSPP? Thank you very much for that, Angela. Um, the National Road Safety Partnership Program, or NRSPP, or NERST, um, it's really about collaboration and sharing of uh, good practice knowledge and trying to get businesses and organisations to do more around road safety, getting them to take ownership of improving uh, the safety of their employees whilst on the road and on their way to, the, to work as well. And also how can you actually uh, liaise and work with the community as well as part of getting the message across. And one thing I'll let you all know, um, during the development of this program, uh, we actually went over to Western Australia and we heard all about this, uh, the Industry Southwest Alliance and the principles and we've drawn on that to try and develop this program. So I think this is why I'm really looking forward to hearing what we've got next because this is the foundation of it. Absolutely, how exciting. Well, Simon uh, Dent is joining us from Western Australia where it's bright and early. So thank you so much for popping into work a little bit early today to join us for this webinar, Simon. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, Thank you for the introduction uh, from both of you and uh, thank you very much for to all of you listening out there taking part of the, uh, in the webinar today. Um, we're going to talk about something today that's very close to my heart um, and that is road safety and, and how we can work together to make our roads safer. This webinar is to share a story of how the Industry Road Safety Alliance was formed, um, why it was formed and the success as it has managed to achieve with the view of encouraging others to follow in the same path. A little history about me first, um, I'm the Port Production Superintendent at Worsley Illumina. I also manage the Emergency Services Group at Refinery. Um, for those of you that have never heard of Worsley Illumina, uh, I've put a, a bit of a map up there that uh, is the southwest of Western Australia. So Bunbury there in the bottom left hand corner of the map is about an hour and a half drive south of Perth. Worsley is one of the largest alumina refineries in the world. It produces about 4.6 million tonnes of alumina a year. We turn bauxite, which we mine from the Boddington bauxite mine, which is about an hour and a half southeast of Perth. We stick it on a 52 kilometre overland conveyor, it goes in the back door of the refinery. Uh, through a process which I don't really understand, they turn red rock into white powder and they then uh, rattle that product down from the refinery down to the port. Uh, which I manage and we, uh, we send the product out to market. Now the question that a lot of people ask is how does the port superintendent get involved in the Industry Road Safety Alliance? Well before Worsley, I spent 24 years working for the WA Police, predominantly in the road enforcement area, including road safety section, and I finally ended up as the officer in charge of a police station in a town called Collie two and a half hours south of Perth and it just so happens to be in the same local government region as the Worsley Refinery. Now I've always fundamentally believed that there are three components to road safety and that is education, engineering and enforcement and I was able to influence the last part of that trio but had little or no influence in the other two areas. When I moved from the police to Worsley in 2009, um, the, the story had actually already started in mid-2008 when the Worsley refinery was in the early stages of a massive $4 billion expansion. They were looking to increase their production from 3.5 million tonnes a year to 
1.6 million tonnes a year. And this project was known as the Efficiency and Growth or ENG project. And it was actually this project that started us on the journey to engage many organisations to work together to achieve safer roads because we've learned that we can't do it on our own. In the early planning stages of the ENG project, the project team conducted a major risk assessment in relation to the significant risks to the project, bearing in mind that this was what they call a greenfields operation, which means new, uh, new equipment and uh, new infrastructure working in the middle of an existing 30-year-old plant. So there were risks of chemical contact, working with heights, uh, working with high pressure steam and a whole range of other things that could potentially hurt our individual, uh, our workers and our contractors. But the number one risk that was identified was that of the drive to and from work. The project realised that there was more chance of their employees getting hurt or killed on the way to and from work than in any other part of the process. If we look at the statistics, you'll understand why. The project was going to see an additional 4,500 vehicles on the road to the refinery every day taking the daily vehicle count on the major highway, which is known as Coldfields Highway, to over 11,000 vehicles a day. The highway, which was the major, it's a major ageing arterial route from Bunbury to Collie and then further east, was already identified as needing substantial works and had claimed a number of lives of drivers and passengers over the previous years. The road is windy and runs through state forest, so the, there is increased risk of wildlife strike, and obviously uh, matched with speed, weather and other road users. At the time, in 2008, the speed limit was 110 kilometres an hour. They also had to manage the access to the mine and the port expansion, placing increased pressure on those road networks, impacting on other workers, but also on the daily road users and other industry commuters. We have a very much a drive-in, drive-out culture at Worsley, with most drivers travelling a minimum of 60 kilometres each way to work, and some people driving upwards of two and a half hours from Perth daily. In some cases during the expansion we had flying fly-out workers coming from the eastern states landing in Perth and then driving to work. So after conducting the road safety study which looked at the roads and road users, the project manager of the ENG project formed an internal road safety committee and as the officer in charge of the local police station I was invited to offer my support, knowledge and guidance in relation to internal and external road safety issues. From this small beginning we started to discuss how this model could grow and the idea of the Industry Alliance was born. We basically extrapolated out our influence within Worsley across a number of similar industry organisations and determined that we could make a fundamental change to road users and road behaviour and that is the genesis of the Industry Alliance. While initially our guiding document was the road safety audit, we quickly determined that we were looking to achieve the same goals as the West Australian State Government towards zero road safety strategy. In more recent years, we've been well guided by the Road Safety Commission Partnership Program. Essentially, the Alliance is a successful partnership utilising a range of partners that had not previously worked together to achieve the role of goal of road safety. Collectively and cooperatively, the Alliance looks to address all aspects of road safety in the region, with particular focus on safe drivers in safe vehicles travelling at safe speeds on safe roads and roadsides. These four cornerstones of the road safety are also the foundation of WA's Towards Zero Road Safety Strategy and the United Nations Decade of Road Safety Campaign. The formation of the Alliance was initially done by considering which government and industry bodies would be most influential in achieving change, and these were determined to be those with the largest workforces. We knew that the state government managed the road, major road networks, but we needed to influence change at a local level as well, and we needed to include local government agencies. Alliance members, whose organisations engage more than 10,000 employees and contractors, meets every second month to work on projects to improve safety. Our current alliance, our current alliance model is shown, um, and the big players in there are South 82 Worsley, which is the company that I work for, Synergy, which is our electricity provider, and Newmont Boddington Gold, which is uh, one of the largest gold mines in the world, and uh, the mine is almost right next door to our bauxite mine in Boddington. We also use uh, the representatives from the Shire of Boddington, Shire of Collie and Shire of Harvey, the local government areas, 
and you can see the government agencies which support us there well. There is the WA Local Government Association, Department of Transport, the Police, the Main Roads, the Road Safety Commission. Um, we have the potential at the moment to influence between five and 10,000 people directly. And at the peak of, of the Alliance in 2009 and 2010, we were able to influence over 15,000 people on a daily basis. I think that the greatest benefit of the Alliance is that we, we've been able to build very strong relationships within this team and we can achieve results much more easily and more quickly than acting as individuals. Strength in the Alliance is driven by having the right people at the Alliance meetings. These people are decision makers or, uh, fundamentally, those with access to the money. As an example of this is Main Roads, where the South West Director is the only other original Alliance member who is still attending. Um, nearly eight years after we formed. And I guess the significant driver in this relationship is the one that we have with the police. The enforcement side of this alliance is essential and we advertise this loud and wide. We wanted our workforce to know that we were working with the police to improve their chances of getting home safe, safely. I guess we'll um, stop here and just see if there are any, any questions before I move on to the second part of, of the um, presentation. Yeah, just before I invite uh, Jerome to uh, say his bit, I'll, uh, I'll uh, point out again to our wonderful ladies and gents in the audience today uh, to please not be shy. We are here to answer your questions and um, to answer any feedback or comments you may have. So please type those into the questions box should anything come to mind. Jerome. Well, I guess one, one sort of question which has sort of popped up there, thanks Simon, was one sort of Delving around, you mentioned how you have um, a lot of people driving. You sort of had a, a I guess it's called a Dido drive-in, drive-out sort of workforce, um, and some people travelling two and a half um, hours a day. You might be diving, delving into this later on, but how did the education working with that sort of risk? Did, did the employees who were actually travelling that recognise the risk they were, they were taking on themselves while driving so far every day and then doing a full shift? Oh, look, I think uh, I think it's like any risk which is something that you need to do. Uh, people don't recognise the, the potential um, harm that it's doing to them or to other road users. So um, part of this was a re-education of our workforce. Um, a lot of these people, I mean, and I've started to do it myself. So now I'm, um, I've recently moved from Collie, which is only 15 minutes away from the refinery. I now live in Bunbury, which is 45 minutes away. Um, so I've had to change, uh, you know, the time that I get up, the time that I go to bed, uh, all of those things because uh, you don't realise the impact that the additional driving will uh, will have on you during your day and how that has a cumulative impact over a week. And so there was a lot of um, re-education of drivers and also I guess identifying to them that the risk is not just to them, it's to their passengers, um, it's to other road users and that while they feel that they are good drivers, uh, the, their capacity to uh, react is severely impacted by fatigue. So it actually gave us a really good platform for some of our early education programs to uh, to re-educate people about things that they may not necessarily have considered and how it impacts on them, their families and their friends. Wonderful. I guess since the expansion, because I, I got the expansion sort of project sort of wound down a bit, has has that sort of education continue with some of the new sort of workers? Or the remaining yes. workers? Yeah, so the, um, the education is, uh, is actually one of the KPIs that we've set um, as an organisation that we, we have to, uh, or we've agreed to roll out new education um, every month. So we, we utilise the, uh, the road safety calendar um, and we, we have access to the, the information that exists in there. And each of the organisations takes the opportunity through either through two box talks or through whatever other communication, internal communication process that exists, to communicate that information to, to the workforces on a monthly basis. So uh, we found that the education piece is very valuable, and so we've continued that right through. It's just the size of the audience that shrunk uh, because, as you said, our expansion has wound up. And so we're now dealing with, from a Wordersley perspective, we, uh, we can influence about 2,500 people at any one time, in difference to nearly 8,000 when we were at the peak of the expansion. Wonderful. And one last question for you uh, before you kick off, and this is probably the one 
which is one of the hard, even harder ones, is it involves a third party entirely beyond your control. You mentioned wildlife strikes. So, what what do how, how do you guys go about? What has that been one of the major sort of headaches you've had to deal with, or or you want to wait and deal with, talk with that later in the presentation? Uh, look, no, we don't talk about it later. Look, I mean, wildlife strikes is a is a significant problem, and there are a range of views as to how we should best uh, deal with that. Um, you know, the, there have been calls in the past. I mean, our biggest issue is kangaroos, um, followed closely by emus. Um, I've heard of a number of people hitting um, eagles, wedge-tailed eagles. Uh, so there's a range of, um, of different wildlife um, that, that does impact on us. There's not a lot that you can do in that space because we are surrounded by bush. Uh, we have um, probably 30 to 35 kilometres of, of thick um, untouched bushland on both sides of the road, uh, most of the way to Bunbury until you hit pasture land. Um, recently we had a, an awful uh, event where three horses had escaped from um, from a paddock and got hit by a truck, uh, which, mm. which caused you know, a significant um, impact to obviously the driver of the truck and the other road users at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, now all we can do in that space is educate people to consider their speed uh, consider their surroundings. Be aware. Don't spend the whole drive up talking to your part, you know, to your offsider because you need to be focused on what you're doing. Uh, there is very little else that you can do other than make people aware that that's the risk. And people that have never lived in this kind of environment before, this is all brand new to them. They don't expect to see a, you know, a large hopping mouse coming out from the <laughs> left hand side of their um, and uh, you know, at 100 kilometres an hour, which is now what the speed limit on that road is, you have very, very little opportunity to react. Uh, and how do you react appropriately? What's the right way to drive your vehicle if you are in that position? So we we go through all of that with uh, the education and some of the um, the face-to-face -face conversations that we have. Wonderful, great advice. Thank you, Simon. Simon, we've had a couple of questions come through from Kathy, Claire and Tom, but what I might get you to do is we'll, we'll move on with the presentation and I'll save those for a little bit later on. Would that be okay? Yeah, fantastic. All right. Um, so I guess if we talk about some of the initiatives that, we, that we've uh, undertaken since we've been part of the Alliance, um, and when you think about the work that we've achieved, it's kind of easiest to frame this within the Towards Zero strategy. So the Alliance recognised that we need to change the mindset within our mining industry that the safety ends at the gate. We needed to start to influence behaviour in an environment that we fundamentally have no control over. So we, we challenged the norm and we looked for, in, for innovation and, uh, and we looked for a coordinated approach to road safety issues. The Alliance continually reviews speed limits uh, and works to ensure that speed limits are adhered to. We work closely with our local police to provide them with data on peak workforce travel times and routes so that targeted enforcement can ensure the best use of police resources and keep the wider travelling public safe on our roads. Uh, we've worked in collaboration with Main Roads WA to uh, re revisit speed limits on certain routes in the region and we've actually had some reduced as appropriate at, at the request of the Alliance. And, uh, one example that I can give you, there's a major intersection uh, of Coalfields Highway and a street called Castaldo Road, which is our main roadway into our refinery. Uh, we, During the expansion, we saw that particular stretch of road reduced from 110 down to 80 kilometres an hour at that intersection. And for the first time in the state of Western Australia, it was done on a timed basis. So we had uh, flashing speed signs that came on at a certain time in the morning. We reduced the speed for a period of two hours and then it went back to the normal speed zone. So we didn't inadvertently impact on general road users that just wanted to drive between Collie and Bunbury. Uh, the only time we impacted on them is when we had a large number of vehicles trying to exit onto the highway or enter onto the onto Castaldo Road. We were able to slow people down and therefore reduce the likelihood of there being a collision at that intersection. That's the first time it's been used in the state. And, uh, and we've actually seen it now being rolled out in other locations after the success of, uh, of that intersection change. We introduced heavy haulage curfews on key travel routes, such as the Coalfields Highway. Uh, this was to reduce the risk of associated light and, vehicle heavy, light and heavy vehicle mix and impacts on the travelling public and the local communities, for example, uh, during school start and finish times. Uh, 
uh, at the Worsley refinery, we actually wouldn't allow trucks to leave the refinery or come into the refinery during curfew times. And so our trucking partners found very quickly that there was no benefit in them trying to breach curfew when they wouldn't be able to get in and deliver uh, anyway. The Alliance also funded additional police patrols during peak times. Um, now this, this was a state first in WA where they accepted a large donation from the Alliance partners because we knew that the WA police were unable to resource the kind of exposure that we considered necessary to uh, effectively enforce the road rules uh, on the way to and from our workplaces. So we struck a historic agreement with the state government to provide funding over a two-year period. And as a result of that, we saw just about every day we saw a police vehicle on one of the Alliance routes. Um, and of course, we all know if you get those blue and red flashing lights behind you, uh, even if you're not doing anything wrong, it changes your behaviour. You start to think, am I, you know, am I speeding? You know, did I use my indicator right? Am I wearing my seatbelt? And all we wanted to do was have people thinking like that all the time, uh, and having that reminder of the police vehicle on the road uh, was certainly going to help that um, that thought process. So the Alliance aimed to identify and address hazards by recognising and acting on regional road safety black spots and hazards, and we provided valuable collective input to many infrastructure programs. We saw intersection upgrades, including the key intersections of Colfields Highway and Gustavo Road and Gustavo Road and Mornington Road. We saw the installation of street lightings uh, at two major road intersections. We also supported the main roads with some of the cost of that through the Alliance. We saw improved road surfaces and road line markings in various locations, particularly those identified by our workers as being high-risk locations. We improved direction and speed signage in multiple locations across our region. We improved sight lines, um, off-site car parks, and the creation of some additional truck bays on high-volume roads. Um, some of the other things that we were able to achieve or have been able to achieve, we look at safe road use. We've, uh, we, we aim consistently to educate our partner workforces and the wider travelling public about how they play a role in making everyone safe on the roads. We have roadside billboards situated on key route uh, displaying road safety messages. These are updated every two months in alignment with an annual calendar of regionally relevant road safety topics, and I'll show you those in a little while. We have major education and awareness campaigns conducted at peak travel times, such as Easter, Christmas and New Year holiday periods. We introduced a bus service and encouraged, encouraged carpooling, which resulted in reducing traffic volumes on our major roads. Um, at its height, we were uh, transporting about 2,000 people a day on the buses to and from site. Uh, as well as this, we, uh, we were working to combat the fatigue of shift workers. And although the service has reduced and we only, uh, only have about 200 people a day using the bus service, it makes them feel that the company values their well-being and we're supporting the road safety initiative. We also encourage our people to uh, to do at-risk reporting, so if they see something on the road, we encourage them to report it, and we have a direct contact with the South West Police where those reports uh, get sent and get actioned uh, as quickly as possible. If we look at safe vehicles, the Alliance members aims to follow the WA Road Safety Fleet Policy Guidelines and implement the highest possible ANCAP safety rating an organisation procurement process and purchasing policies. We've established fleet safety procedures, uh, introduced state-of-the-art vehicle designs, installed global positioning systems and in-vehicle monitoring systems. We're currently investigating fatigue monitoring for shift workers. And uh, at our site and at some other sites, we've actually um, had a minimum ANCAP rating issue for all new vehicles that are coming on site. And, and with us, it's five-star rated or any light vehicles that are coming onto the site. Um, I talked briefly about before about the billboards. Um, these are a couple of examples uh, of the billboards. The, the slow down and enjoy the ride is a WA government one. It's actually, I think, one of the best road safety slogans that, that we've seen in recent times because it gets us to think about road safety in a different way. These signs change every few months to try and have, avoid people becoming signed blind to the messages. Um, watch out for killer roos, uh, obviously about the wildlife which I talked about. Um, 
the next one, the next lot of signs, which I don't have a, a copy of, is um, in relation to the risk of um, trees on the roadside. And although they don't jump out like the kangaroos do, we seem to have a bit number of people that, that drive into them. Um, I'm going to play you a video now, which was um, designed, um, I guess, to promote the industry road safety alliance. It highlights many of our partners, and it's a snapshot of who we are and what we do. So I'm just going to get that. Hopefully, the bandwidth will let you all watch it. successful over the years in, in picking up a, uh, a number of awards um, and I think uh, you know the, the truth is that the measure of our success is not driven by trophies um, but by a reduction in, in road trauma. Uh, the most recent award that we were successful in winning was the Injury Control Council of Western Australia Award uh, which was the prestigious Partnerships Excellence Award. Um, handsome guy in the middle is myself. Uh, receiving the award on behalf of the Alliance. We also were successful in picking up the Industry Commission Road Safety uh, Awards for the Most Innovative Road Safety Project and the WA Manager, Managing Directors Award, Chain of Minerals and Energy People Category Award and the 2009 Local Government Road Safety Awards. Um, one of the most recent innovations that we've, that we've undertaken is a, a number of uh, two got two new toolbox animation videos. Uh, we determined that the two areas that needed to uh, receive some additional attention were fatigue and distraction. So the Alliance uh, wrote and paid for the uh, two whiteboard animations. These are used in our workplaces, including our work toolbox meetings, safety meetings. Uh, we've used them at a couple of local events. See the cost there, just under twenty-two thousand uh, dollars. Seven different versions. That's because we kept changing up exactly what we wanted to see in the uh, in the animations, and uh, and this was paid for by the alliance out of the funding that, that each alliance member puts forward at the uh, at the start of each year uh, to pay for projects exactly like this. Uh, so I'm just going to show you now um, at the start of each one. There's a message that was written and produced by each of the Alliance members. So these are, I guess, tailored for the workplace. Uh, the one I'm going to show you now is um, from Synergy. See that now.
Hi there, Rob Frank here. I'm with you in a minute, I just need to send a text. Sorry about that. Now, where was I? That's right. I was about to tell you that 32% of all road crash deaths are linked to driver distraction. It only takes a... And your life is changed in an instant. Please take a little longer to watch the video. Here's your choice. You're driving, you reply to that message asking you about what you did last night, and then answer the police officer's question about why you failed to see the bike rider you've just hit. Or simply ignore your mobile phone, stay focused on driving and avoid the collision. Driver distraction has been linked to 32% of all road crash deaths and serious injuries, making it a significant contributing factor to road trauma. Ranking it up there with speeding, drink driving, and fatigue. Two thirds of drivers will tell you that they rate driver distraction as a problem behaviour on our roads. The use of mobile phones being the single biggest distraction. So, what are the signs of being distracted? Well, there's near misses, swerving and correcting, and clipping the curve. You might not be so lucky. But it's not just the ever expanding use of technology that is driving us to distraction. Simple things like adjusting your air conditioning, selecting a song, eating, drinking or smoking are all things that can cause you to take your eyes off the road, even for just a fraction of a second. And while there are always going to be some distractions that are unavoidable, there's a number of simple things you can do to manage them. For a start, set all your vehicle controls and select your music before you take off. And make sure your windscreen and mirrors are clean. If you've got kids and pets on board, make sure they are properly restrained. Know where you're going and how you're going to get there. And don't forget to take regular breaks or swap drivers if you are driving for a long distance. And importantly, turn off your mobile phone. So, stay focused. Don't be tempted to check that text and make sure you get to your destination safely. Getting you home safely is important to us. We ask you to ensure that you are rested and ready to drive before heading home. Um. So in the early stages of the Alliance, the National Transport Commission, the Organisation for Economic Development and Cooperation and the World Bank all expressed interest in replicating our Alliance model on a wide scale. And at a corporate level, BHP Billiton examined the success of the Alliance and looked at how it could replicate its good work around road safety and its other operations around the globe. The South West Industry Road Safety Alliance was the first joint private government road safety approach of this size and scope ever undertaken and has attracted widespread interest as a road safety model around Australia and across the world. The model has been replicated with similar alliances in WA's Pilbara, Midwest, Gascoigne and Goldfields Esperance region, with each alliance sharing the primary goal of improving road safety and reducing road trauma locally by bringing together the region's main industry bodies, relevant government agencies uh, with responsibility for road safety, big advisory bodies and key corporate organisations. Using our collective muscle is the next step for the alliances. We will further broaden our influence and we, uh, we were lucky enough for the alliance chairpersons to meet with the road safety minister in December uh, and hopefully that will start to change the, further change the um, capacity to drive change within the state of West Australia. The alliance has achieved many positive road safety outcomes by bringing together local decision makers and stakeholders to address all aspects of road safety. Its coordinated community-wide approach has delivered results through the development of initiatives at the grassroots level. Anecdotal and statistical evidence indicates that the Alliance is making a significant difference towards reducing death and serious injuries, a decrease in speeds and an increase in road safety awareness within our local communities. For an example, there was a decrease in the number of crashes during the Worsley Illuminar expansion period, which translates into a reduction in potential injury and increased productivity. Very early figures saw a 25% reduction in fatal crashes in the Alliance catchment area in the first year of the Alliance, 
and a 29% reduction in serious crashes over the same period. There was also a reduction in speed-related infringements issued by police across the Alliance areas, which showed that there was a change in driver behaviour. By working together and sharing expert knowledge, Alliance partners achieve much more than they can do separately. For example, mining industry members have shared their alcohol and drug testing procedures and all road safety programs are coordinated through the Road Safety Commission to maximise the chance of success by delivering a consistent message. While difficult to measure, anecdotal indications suggest that people driving to work are reducing their speed and risk of driving. Our public education campaigns, which have included TV advertisements, have drawn community endorsement, including feedback supporting the industry for taking action. Safety. Such campaigns build on education campaigns within the workplace with employees spreading road safety messages by osmosis as they discuss initiatives from work with family and friends. Significantly, the Alliance provides for some community ownership and it most critically it shows a personal change in ownership for our employees. I guess the event that stands out for me about how we made a difference uh, in the early stages of our alliance, as I said earlier in the presentation, we communicated strongly to our workforce that we were engaging with WA Police and uh, they set up a number of booze bus uh, locations on the road to and from work and in the very early stages that uh, certainly raised the ire of many of our workforce complaining that their day was being taken up, you know, it's four o'clock in the morning, why are you testing us for alcohol, we should be out there catching real criminals, um, and, and a lot of the anger was directed towards the police. After uh, some 12 months of the program, we ran more booze bus programs after educating our workforce as to the benefits of the, of the booze buses and what we were trying to achieve. And what we found is that the people that had some alcohol in their system were the ones that had the anger directed towards them by the other motorists. And so the, the view was, this is why the police are here, we don't want you in our workplace if you're going to come to work with our holding system. So we saw almost a 180 degree turnaround in the attitude of many of our drivers that police were there for the benefit of them, uh, as, well, as well as the benefit of other road users. So finally, um, the South West Industry Road Safety Alliance is the longest running and largest industry road safety alliance. There were many changes, uh, challenges faced in its establishment and implementation, but we have successfully gained community support and employee engagement. Our future challenges include staying relevant, encouraging new members to join, and looking for ways to further improve the safety of the, of the roads that we can influence. And um, I, I encourage any of you that are interested in, in uh, understanding more, my contact details are on the slides. I encourage you to touch base with me by, uh, by email or by phone, and uh, I'm happy to talk um, in relation to the Industry Alliance and what we've achieved. Um, because as I said at the start of this, uh, road safety is a passion of mine, and the Industry Alliance has given me an opportunity to, uh, to really make a difference along with uh, other like-minded companies and individuals. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Um, back to you, Angela. Thank you so much, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Oh, okay. I think we're right now. Sorry about that little hiccup. Not sure what that was. Uh, thank you so much for your time in, in preparing today's presentation and, and for delivering it for today. I'm, I'm sure the audience would uh, would agree it was um, certainly an enjoyable one and um, a bit of an educational one for me also. Um, we've had a number of questions come in from the audience, so thank you guys so much for getting involved. And Simon, if you've got a couple of more minutes, we'll, uh, we'll throw a couple your way uh, Jerome and I will take it in turns to, to throw them at you, if you wouldn't mind. No, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you've got. Okay. Um, quite uh, a few of the questions that came through related to um, engagement, community engagement and so forth. A lot of people seem to be struggling with this side of things. So they're sort of asking for your advice on... Um, you know, how can they improve buying from key stakeholders um, and develop those relationships? What, what's your advice on that front? Look, you have to make it um, interesting 
to to the individual. So when we started the alliance, uh, bearing in mind that the genesis was the Internal Road Safety Committee, the conversations that I was having from a policing perspective was that uh, that we needed to do more to educate people about the risks of driving. Uh, the business Worsley was interested in, in letting its people know that um, you know this was a, a significant risk, and so it was about well if we're thinking this and we're talking about this, then there must be others that have a similar interest. Getting those individuals together, the hook that we used was just purely that we felt that we could collectively uh, influence far more than what we could do individually. It's very easy from a company perspective, even one the size of Worsley. And bearing in mind when they started, we were sitting within the BHP Billiton um, group of companies. So that's a, that's a significant, uh, I guess, industrial clout behind you. But our capacity to influence the right people about the right things was limited because we were a single company. Um, and so the conversations that were had with the other partnership groups was, well, let's let's look at what else we can achieve, and how that how is that going to um, benefit your business? And once uh, you can get the other people to understand that the risk that we were talking about, getting our people to and from work, is as real for those people, then it's very easy to get by uh, when you can show that a model like ours works uh, and that through the collective uh, bargaining power, I guess, of, of companies of, and the local government and the state government all getting together, you, you can actually influence change. And people don't want to sit around and have meetings for the state for the sake of having meetings. I get that. Um, and so you, you automate, you want to see uh, change and you want to see it relatively quickly. That doesn't come about fast because you have to build the relationships, uh, but it's the collective goal of road safety and the fact that, and, and the way that I start my road safety talks, and I still do them on a fairly regular basis, is that you know, the, the reason why I do the talks is that I have skin in the game. So I talk about the fact that not only do I drive on the roads every day, but I have a family that now drives on the road every day. Um, I have four kids that all drive on the road every day. And so anything that I can do to make their journey safer, to ensure that they get from home to uni or home to work safely, then I need to take every opportunity that exists for me to do that. And when you can sell them and hook them with the message that this is not just about the company, this is not just about the employees, that this is about them and their families, and when they feel valued, then you'll get better productivity. All of those things can be triggers for them to, to become engaged in this process, and that's where we got our success initially, and then by able to, to see the change that we were able to create, that just, I guess, uh, had a bit of a snowballing effect, where as we achieved more success, people were more interested in being involved. So it's a long-winded answer, but I hope that that sort of gets to the, <laughs> the guts no, I think that was very well said. Thank you for answering that question. And um, to those of you who asked, I hope uh, that's been able to clarify things for you a little bit better. Feel free to touch base if you need further clarification. Jerome. I've got a good question here from Cathy. Um, is all road transport for the industry bodies handled in-house or by contracted companies? If so, how does this affect your ability to influence this area of road safety between the refinery and the port? Yeah, great question, Kathy. So, no, most of our uh, most of our transporting is done by contract companies. Um, we influence them by writing it into their contracts. So, uh, certainly in the early stages of the alliance, when we had the when we had the most traffic on the roads, uh, we actually set up our contracts with our trucking companies and wrote in there the times they weren't allowed to travel on the alliance roads. Um, and then, now Worsley was the only company that did that. The other companies would just work to influence those trucking companies. And as I said, what we ended up doing was we would just close our gates during the, the curfew times. So if they chose to drive during curfew hours, then they would be parked up for two hours or whatever the time frame might be when they got to wherever they were going. And uh, and when it came to renegotiating a contract with them, if we had breaches of the of the curfew, then that would obviously 
uh, influence our decision around whether or not we wanted to continue to engage with a company that was not interested in working with us to reduce the road safety risk. So we we are less inclined to enforce the curfew now because the volume of traffic is reduced. We do use it on some occasions, particularly around oversized vehicle loads. Uh, when, when we have big pieces of equipment coming to site, then we won't allow them to travel during curfew time, and that's by negotiation. Um, and, and I guess as an add-on to that, we are currently working towards running a heavy transport alliance, uh, which will be a breakaway group, I guess, of the, of the industry alliance, but looking at achieving the same goals that we have with our industry group with the transport fleets that that work in the southwest of Western Australia. So that's in its early stages, but um, we're looking at running a forum in relation to that in the next few months uh, with the view of the transport bodies then having a similar voice that the Alliance, the Industry Road Safety Alliance has to influence change in their workplace, which will obviously benefit all road users. Oh, sorry, back to me. Yes, um, absolutely. Thank you for that. And, and uh, thank you. It was um, it was Kathy who asked that question. Thanks, Kathy, for getting involved. Um, Simon has a question here. Um, did you encounter any particular challenges in getting local employers to take part? Um, no, look, not initially. Um, we were able to sell the message pretty well. Uh, since the, I guess, the, the drop-off in the peak of road numbers and we've seen significant improvements on our roads, in fact, the Coalfields Highway right now is going through a $25 million upgrade. Um, and so we've, we've seen such significant changes. Um, it's a bit like when you're taking um, medication for something and you start feeling better, you stop taking the medication until the symptoms come back. It's a little bit like that because we're not seeing the road crashes and we're seeing a change in driver behaviour. Getting people to stay involved is really becoming the challenge. Getting people interested when the, the headline in the local papers is seven deaths in 12 months, um, that actually makes it a fairly easy hook for people to, to become involved. Um, we actually had the opposite problem where we had too many people that were interested in being part of the Alliance and we had to screen out the ones that we felt were going to add the most value and part of that was the larger of the workforces we felt were the ones that could add the most value because we could, we could get to the most people um, and then the smaller companies that were interested we would provide them with a level of information and support without them actually being part of the alliance. Certainly a better problem to have, um, more people interested than not so yeah I think that's, I think that's a good outcome. Jerome. Uh, thanks, Angela. Um, two questions here. Uh, one from Brian, and probably had a, uh, both from Brian. I'm sure we had to touch on it pretty quickly the first one. Um, it's just going back to our wildlife sort of question. He was sort of referencing that um, over in Canada they've been using wildlife whistles. Have you tried anything uh, in that area at all? Wildlife whistles? Well, the, there is a product that you can purchase uh, called a shoe roo. Now, I'm not endorsing that as a product. I think that's a generic name for a whistle that you stick on the front of your car um, and it supposedly puts it out or emits a signal that the kangaroos hate. Um, the people that I know that have used those would would actually tell you that it tracks the, the, the problem. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think that there's any any supporting evidence one way or the other to say that, that this product um, is effective. Unfortunately what works on kangaroos doesn't work on wallabies, what works on wallabies doesn't work on emus. What works on emus doesn't work on um, And so the, the vast range of wildlife that we have, and I talked about the horses, um, I know we've had cattle on the road, sheep on the road, you know, so we have a, a fairly significant range of um, four and two legged um, animals that will wander onto the roadway. Uh, there is no single solution. Uh, one that was touted many, many years ago was to to employ a culling process on our roads, but most of these animals that we're talking about are territorial, and as soon as you thin out the numbers in one location, it will be very quickly filled by another group of the same animal, uh, because the, the patch, if you like, the territory is clear, so they'll go in and, and 
taken over. So, um, yes, we we have encouraged people to to look for alternate ways of protecting themselves, but the reality is the safest way to protect yourself from wildlife is to drive to the conditions and, and be alert. Thanks for that, Simon. I guess the next question sort of links a little bit into that as well. Um, was there any consideration to time of day, e.g. night time versus um, daytime, driving to, to lower risk at all? Yeah, look, we, uh, I mean, our shift changes, the guys on site work predominantly 12 hours a day, um, and then you have your day shift workers who start, and I'm a day shift worker, my day started today at half past five in the morning, some people will start their day shift day at 8 o'clock in the morning. So there is some flexibility um, as around the world the different seasons bring different start times from a risk perspective. Uh, you can drive to work at 5 in the morning in summertime, it's bright sunlight. If you drive to work at 7 in the morning in wintertime, it's still dark. So um, we, we don't have the capacity to sh swap our shifts around to suit the weather. Super seasons, uh, so we we set our we have provided some flexibility within work groups for them to manage themselves. But the reality is that it's a 12-hour day, and you need to have that break sometime, and you need to look at the fatigue risks uh, versus the driving risks. So all that has been reviewed, um, but there's not a there's not a huge amount of flexibility when we can do those things. Wonderful. Great. Um, look, we have actually gone a little bit over time and um, I, I do thank everyone for enthusiastically sending your questions through. It's always lovely to have uh, an audience that's inquisitive. Uh, Simon's details are there on your screen and, and he did mention that he's most happy for anyone to uh, contact him if you'd like to discuss any aspect of this initiative in more detail. So um, on that note, I will say goodbye to Simon. Thank you again so much for your time today. Uh, to our wonderful audience for joining us and supporting the National Road Safety Partnership Program and for Jerome for coming into the studio and um, being a top bloke and assisting me here so it's, it's great having you. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Alrighty. Good afternoon then. Um, enjoy your lunch and I look forward to seeing you on future National Road Safety Partnership Program webinars. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much.